Hiya folks, if you're new in town, don't be shy and just stand by. Let me explain to you how this works. Feeling bored or lonely and you need someone to watch cartoons with? Then look no further, because I'm here to play in your ear. You can listen to the podcast alone or alongside the cartoon. The choice is yours. Either way, let's get to tune along. Doing an episode today, one of my favorite shows growing up. I, I forgot a lot about the show. It's uh, it's it's grown out of my memory. That's why I wanted to watch it. I'm talking about Jackie Chan Adventures. We're going to be watching uh, Season 1, Episode 1. Let's go ahead and start right away. Um, it's called The Dark Hand. I got here 19 minutes, 27 seconds. Find the version. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll cue where we are in the episode so you can keep along. Uh, but let's go ahead and start right now in three, two, one, play. So yeah, like I said, Jackie Chan Adventures. Now, now he's walking into the China shop. You see the actual Jackie Chan fighting some ninjas. This show it came out on the WB. And even in Canada, we did have access to the WB. Uh, I, I know it played a lot for me. I, I think my bread and butter with the show was on YTV. I don't remember the exact time it played. It probably played somewhere around... Uh, uh, I know it played on the Saturday mornings. It was a Saturday morning cartoon for YTV, um, you know, part of the schedule. But I do think, I do believe they did have an after school, once in a while, evening episode, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe once a week, but not, an ever, uh, not on a nightly basis. Uh, but it was a Saturday, Sunday morning cartoon um, regular uh, for YTV. And then the Kids WB, I do remember this playing Saturday mornings. I remember seeing, you know, Jackie Chan... Uh, you know, appearing on WB uh, with his little promos, uh, showing off, you know, some of the martial arts skills, much like he did in the, in the TV series. Because if you recall, uh, you know, you see a bit of Jackie at the end. They, if fans will ask him questions. And I always wondered if the, those were actual fans or if that was just scripted. I don't know. I'm sure there's people out there that know the answer. Uh, but it was just cool to see Jackie Chan, one of the most renowned action comedy, in my opinion, action comedy um, Probably one of the best cho um, martial arts choreographer out there, uh, along with Bruce Lee and and, uh, and Jet Li and all those guys. Uh, but Jackie Chan, for me, is the biggest star, the biggest Chinese star, even more than Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee came at an uh, you know at an older age uh, for most people, and he passed away. And uh, I'm a huge Bruce Lee fan, nonetheless. I love Bruce Lee. I, I would say Bruce Lee is probably a better martial artist than Jackie Chan, but Jackie Chan is a better entertainer. All the movies he makes, the way he makes his uh, choreographies, they're meant to showcase, you know, fast-moving action. And what better place than a TV show, a cartoon show? Uh, you know, I can't think of a better TV show to make from a movie or just the personality of a character. You know, you could probably make a Jean-Claude Van Damme or a, uh, not even a Steven Seagal, you know what I mean? But I would think Jean-Claude Van Damme would come the next closest, maybe with Chuck Norris. Um, but nobody compares to Jackie Chan. From all his movies, all his stunts, you would think they were from some Hollywood, you know, it wasn't true. And, and the perfect place for that is a cartoon. And now we got here, Jackie Chan Adventures. Season 1, Episode 1, starting fresh, uh, The Dark Hand. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing they're just going to be showing off the characters, showing all the bad guys, showing Jackie Chan. You, imagine you're a kid in the 90s, you see this episode, you, you hear about this show coming out, um, you're not gonna. If you're a martial arts fan, if you're a Jackie Chan fan, if you're an a action fan in any way, um, you're gonna watch this show. And just the fact that Jackie Chan actually appears in the show, even from the beginning, just the first scene, you see Jackie Chan, you're a freaking 12, 13 year old kid, freaking out. Uh, if you're if you're a Jackie Chan fan, you're freaking out. You're watching the show, and I gotta say, I'm not the you know I'm not the biggest connoisseur for the show. I don't you know I'm uh, I've watched. Uh, probably 30 episodes in total I don't remember all of them um, but I do know that they have a rhythm they have a pat not a pattern but they have a rhythm they they seem to flow a good storyline each episode even though it's part of a larger story still has that feel like it's uh, you know its own episode in itself uh, you know with the talismans it, it feels like forever they're going after the talismans and and if I, if I if I recall, I could be wrong on this, but if I recall, each season is dedicated to a certain talisman or a certain power, and they're trying to harness that power during the entire season. I think they made five seasons of the show. And right now we got Jade and we got uh, Uncle. 
You know, it, the one guy, the one character that stands out for me is the uncle. You know, when he, when he's saying his spell, uh, Jackie Talisman, not important. Uh, just those, just hearing that brings back those good fucking memories. Um, ja you know, even as far as the show, Jackie Chan's not my favorite character. I would say the uncle is my favorite character. And then Jade. Jade is probably my second favorite character. Jackie would be my third. He's... And he's like Jackie Chan in real life in a way. He's, he well, not the real Jackie Chan, but the the cinematic t movie Jackie Chan. He's supposed to be this martial artist, naive martial artist, uh, gets himself into trouble, uses his uh, skills to get out of it. Now, look, if you look at the three bad guys, I know there's some, supposed to be some kind of reference for all three of them. I don't recall what it is. One guy's, uh, one guy's a fucking Frankenstein, Frankenstein, right? And the other guy, I'm assuming, is supposed to look like Jet Li. Um, yeah, that guy right there with the uh, yellow sunglasses. And look, I'm, g I'm just getting right now. <laughs> Isn't that just Rush Hour 1 right there where he's trying to save the Chinese vases, the artifacts? So in a way, like they said, the show is supposed to be based off of Jackie Chan's career, his, um, you know, his subtle career. You know, they're not going to obvious, they're not going to make it too obvious, but they're going to put little hints in there to make Jackie Chan pop out like the Jackie Chan we know. And first scene, the first action scene, is the scene from Rush Hour 1, where he's saving the vases. Now let's keep going. I'm sure I'm going to miss a few, but let's see what other, um, other uh, you know, references we can see for Jackie Chan. Look, climbing on top, uh, another Rush Hour. What, is he going to hang from a sign now? Honestly, I'm taking a guess. I haven't seen this episode. I don't think I even remember this episode. But that's just classic Jackie Chan, running over rooftops, chasing the bad guys. And then you add the mystical aspect to to the show. You've got the talismans. You've got uh, you know the magic, the whole you know right there. Jackie falling. It's just classic Jackie Chan. Oh hey, what are you doing on my hood? And I know Jackie Chan didn't voice the character. I know it's voiced by somebody else. But but like I said, just the fact that Jackie Chan shows up at the end and they ask questions and he does promos for the show um, gave gave this show more of an un authenticity. Uh, than I think would have had otherwise. And the art is pretty cool too, not to lie. Uh, the way it moves, the way it looks, kind of resembles the 2003 Ninja Turtles. Granted, the background scenes don't, but just the way the characters move and, uh, you know, and, and play themselves out, I, I just get that vibe of Ninja Turtles. I think it, you know, for five seasons, that's pretty darn good. And then again, guys, I'm just judging the first episode right now. It's been so long since I've seen the show. It might get better. The animation might get better in the background. Uh, you know, the foreground um, sceneries, they just look a little bit uh, lazy, if you will. Almost like they're they are concentrating on the action. They're focusing on the, the animation of the motion, uh, the way Jackie moves. And that's exactly what they're doing right now in the first scene. We're seven minutes and 15 seconds into the episode right now. And Jackie Chan has done nothing but kick some butt, just showcase his martial arts skills. I wonder if this was the pilot. I, I'd have to assume this was the pilot, right? Yeah, playing in a playground. Who didn't want to do that? Who didn't want to try and jump around? But then again, you know, even myself as a kid, I wanted to em emulate Jackie Chan. I always loved Jackie Chan. I was, I like to think of myself as one of his biggest fans in the, you know, in the early 2000s. Um, you know, I read his biography. I, I had every single movie. I would go to Chinatown and get the bootlegs before they even came out, his Chinese movies that would even come out here. Um, you know, I, I even recall buying a, a super series. It was like 20 Jackie Chan movies on one DVD. I always wondered how the heck they did that. And now that I think about it, I think it was on super low quality, or super, you know, compressed to the fullest, but it had most of the movies. It didn't have Rush Hour 1 and 2, but it had every Jackie Chan Hong Kong film made before then from, you know, Twins, Twin Dragon, um, whatever it's called, Twin Dragon. Uh, even, I think they, the last one they had on the DVD was The Medallion, which is um, more of a Hollywood, you know, comedy, along with Shanghai Night, Shanghai Noon. So is that guy, that guy's supposed to be the bad guy. The bald guy's supposed to be the bad guy, right? He's supposed to, I, I don't remember the plot at all. I used to watch this, sh this show so much. And like I said, look, March break just passed, just passed, right? I had D I had VHS recordings. I would record a Saturday morning uh, cartoon slot. I would record like five episodes or six episodes of just a Saturday morning cartoon block uh, and keep it and just have it 
to watch one, during the week whenever because I always had I always enjoyed the idea of at any given moment you can just pull out whatever was played on Saturday morning and watch it on a Wednesday evening or Wednesday night. Now today that that's not really much of a wow factor, but you know think about it. Two thousand two, two thousand three, I was in you know I just started high school, and I'm going to I'm going to spring break at my grandmother's house for uh, for a whole week, and I needed something to watch. She didn't have internet. She didn't have uh, video games. I had to bring whatever I could bring. And uh, and I remember just bringing a few, you know, TV shows. I said, you know what, the week before I'm going to record Saturday morning cartoons, bring it over to the grandma's house, and have uh, maybe a little something to go back on. And I'll, every time I would watch an old recording, I would always put myself in the shoes at the time when I watched it and just think, like, wow, I'm not actually supposed to be watching this on a Thursday night. This was meant to be watched on Saturday mornings. And, um, you know, not even thinking about uh, when it came out. Um I'm just looking here on the Wikipedia. So, yeah, Original Network, this thing came out on Kids WB. Like I said, I remember that. I remember the promos um, from September 2000 to 2005, July. So it played for five years. It, it did have a, a significant impact. I remember the Ga Game Boy Advance game. Might have had a GameCube game, I don't recall. But um, the show as a whole was a solid show. I'm trying to think of anything else like it. Like I said, Ninja Turtles. I, c I could definitely relate to Ninja Turtles with this show. You know, about four or five, you know, five seasons, give or take. Um, there's only so much you can do after a certain point. No, no. The bald guy, I think, was a good guy. He's supposed to be like the agent. Not because now I'm seeing the guy that's uh, the white haired guy. You know, I'm, I'm saying all these names. I don't remember their names. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but it's just fun to just watch and just, you know, reminisce about these old shows. If you haven't watched this show in a long time, if honestly, if you, if this is the first time you're hearing about this show in over 15, 20 years, uh, give it a watch, please. It is good. Um, I'm going to watch an episode on my own later just to, just to get the whole flow of it. But like I said, when I watch these episodes, I don't actually hear much of the audio. I just love talking about it, getting the emotions, getting the memories out. Um, you know, I think his name was Valmont. And I'm looking here, Valmont, yeah. The characters. I, I wish Wikipedia, well, there are Wikipedias that are better. Um, okay, the talismans. You've got all the years. You've got the you know pig, dog, rooster, monkey, and each one gave you a special power, a special uh, you know. And I remember Jackie utilizing those powers over time, and and I think if you collected all of them, you've got you you would get like a superpower. And each each season had its own superpower. Don't quote me on that, guys. But I, I do remember each season being specific to a special power. Or a talisman. Now, um, geez, we're already uh, 12 minutes in, into the episode. So right now, Jackie's just fighting, and he's learning about all the characters. He's learned, the bald guy's supposed to be like, uh, you know, Agent Fury from Avengers from the scene, from the looks of it. He's gonna give him his debriefings. He's gonna give Jackie his intelligence. Jade's supposed to be the wild, the wild card. She's just gonna follow Jackie. She's uh, she's a great martial artist. Um, but yeah. God, I, there's just so much to talk about for this show. I, I, I feel like I, I, one episode is not enough to to even scratch the surface. Um, another episode that comes to mind, and I, the one that I did record that I brought to my grandmother's house, and the reason I remember so much, because I watched it freaking every single day for a week while I was there. I had nothing to do. Uh, it was the Jackal, the the one where um, uh, Jackie Chan, I think I believe he goes to London, and he goes underground London, and he finds Jackal, the Jackal. And... And, that, and there's a whole underground city. He finds a talisman. He's beating the bad guys, this and that. But for myself, the main the main thing I watched Jackie Chan Adventures for was for the end. When actual Jackie Chan would come on the screen and just give his two cents or qu people would ask him a question. And I always felt, in my honestly, in my heart, I always felt like Jackie Chan was an honest man. I, he, he probably is. Um, Anytime somebody asked him a question, it probably it did come from the heart. You felt like he wasn't just trying to give an answer to look cool. He was giving an answer that actually meant uh, what he meant, you know, in, in for himself. I read his biography, his autobiography. He he went to an opera school or some kind of performance, uh, martial arts performance opera, uh, you know, kind of school. I remember reading in his autobiography is he would jump off of the school buses, not the school bus, but the, you know, the public transit. He would, they would do these, uh, they were stuntmen. Essentially, they were stuntmen. They would train every day, get hurt, get bruised up, 
and him and his buddies like Samo Hung, uh, a lot of guys that you know he featured in his later mo- in his mo- during his you know the upbringing of his career he featured those characters, and uh, and that's why it's fun to watch this show. Uh, I'd, I'd, five seasons is just a lot of content to get through, and for myself, I just don't have much time to go through it. But it's just fun to think about. If you've got honestly, if anybody out there can do a Jackie Chan Adventures, which I'm sure they have, but you know all the references, all the uh, the original references, all the characters that might have showed up, uh, where people don't actually know the the significance of it, but you know the real diehard fans do know. That would be cool to see. I wouldn't mind seeing like a YouTube special on that. That'd be really awesome. But these episodes go by fast. I do remember that. I remember watching them. The action keeps you interested. Everything that's going on. Sometimes they would, li- you know, a lot of times I should say, they would link you to the next episode. Something would happen to Jackie or Jade would get kidnapped or Uncle or anybody. Um, or, you know, sometimes they'd be fighting and all of a sudden the, you know, one of the characters would just be outmatched or outnumbered. Like I remember the, Sam- the you know, the sumo guy. Um, oh, fuck, I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting his name. But, uh, yeah, he was just, you'd think he can take on like a thousand guys, but he, even him would get overwhelmed. He's supposed to be stronger than Jackie. Uh, Jackie's just a more well-balanced martial artist. He's, he's got all the skills. Jay's the wild card. Uncle is the brains in a way, uh, or the wild brains. And, um, yeah, but I think later on they bring in on a few more characters to make, keep it interesting. And just the out of fact with the talismans. Uh, very cool. They keep the the Chinese mytho- mythology alive. Um, you know, I'm just I'm just trying to listen right now. So Jackie, th- is this the first time? I didn't see the beginning, but if if this is the first time Jackie shows up to the place, you gotta feel like it's like the Bronx. Um, you know, Rumble in the Bronx, where he goes to visit his uncle for the first time. God, you can do a whole series on Jackie Chan alone. There's just too much to cover. So many movies, so such a career. What a career. Um, I'm sure Jackie Chan has affected everybody, even if it's for the good or the bad. Uh, fucking people know who Jackie Chan is. There's no denying that. And just right there, that scene with the moon and the ninjas, those ninjas look pretty cool. The bad guy ninjas, the way they flow with the shadows, that's pretty freaky. A lot of mysticism. And... Uh, you know, mystery, you're trying to wonder, how can Jackie Chan fight all these people? But, uh, you know, deep down in the back of your soul, you know, there's no doubt. Jackie Chan can take anybody on. <laughs> it's Jackie Chan, for Pete's sake. Now, that being said, look, I didn't even talk about the Rush Hour movies. Those are my, f- I, I, I gotta say, if I was to do a top ten movie, I mean, not, not based on quality or just, just based on my own personal preference, um... Definitely Rush Hour 1 is my number 1 or number 2. Uh, Rush Hour 2 as well is up there. Um, Rush Hour 3, not so much. I thought it was a little bit forced. It, they they just used the exact same formulas as the other shows. as Sorry, as the other movies, the same comedy, the same... Uh, it just felt... I don't know. You know, you know what I'm saying? When you, get, when you get to that third movie after 20 years, what, what do people expect? They expect to see the same crap they, or the same things they saw earlier uh, redone. Um, but Rush Hour 4, from what I've heard, I, th- I think they're making it right, and I just hope they go all out. I, I hope they do something unique, something new. Uh, same thing with uh, Men in Black. Men in Black 3, I thought, was a little more stale compared to 1 and 2. Um, and, and, and Like I said, Men in Black 1, Men in Black 2, Rush Hour 1, Rush Hour 2, those are in my top five. So what's my fifth movie? Probably the Lord of the Rings saga. I'll put that all in the same thing, <laughs> if I'm allowed. But... Uh, Okay, here goes uh, here goes Uncle trying to do his uh, chi fighting, Tai Chi fighting. Yeah, the sumo's got nothing to do with that. <laughs> it's funny, I, I don't know if anybody noticed there was a chicken uh, talisman. You know, the episode's about to end here in a minute, and I, I, I just got so much I want to talk about for the show. I might, I might just keep ranting a little bit afterwards uh, if, uh, if, uh, if I remember what I got to say, but... Uh, so yeah, just judging off the first episode, you see Jackie Chan, he you see all the characters, most of the characters, you get the whole gist of it. Um, I think it was just to introduce everything to the fans. They said, hey, Jackie Chan's coming onto the cartoon screen. What have you got to pull? What are you going to do? This is a, In my opinion, this is a pilot. Showcase all the characters. Showcase the comedy, the humor, the... Uh, there you go, the first talisman. The rooster. 
And just the fact, like I said, just the fact, oh, is he pretending? So he brings back the shield. Was he a bad guy? That's right. That's right. Wasn't the sumo guy a bad guy? At the beginning? Now I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember that I've just got those same feelings like uh, when I first saw the show. The sumo guy was a bad guy. And then he ends up turning good. He, he ends up coming to the good side. Just the shock. Okay, guys, the episode's about to end here for me. And, oh, man, the version I have does not have Jackie Chan talking, which is a huge pity. I just found whatever version I could find. Um, but anyways, or maybe the, the the later episodes have it. I could be wrong. Uh, but, yeah, that was Season 1, Episode 1, Jackie Chan Adventures. I just want to say a few more things on the episode, just on the show. Uh, you know, I'm just going to check out Episode 2 just for the fun of it. Okay, they all in the same way. They're all short. They just don't show the uh, the endings, um, which is uh, which is a shame because uh, that's what I lived. Oh, hang on, I could be wrong. Okay, I'm wrong. I'm wrong, guys. I'm wrong. I just fast forwarded season one thirteen, episode thirteen, and Jackie Chan was at the end. So I don't think they did it for season one or a few of episodes of season one. They didn't have Jackie Chan at the end, or maybe if I could be wrong. They could have not had it for a lot of episodes. But in my opinion, I always seem to remember Jackie Chan appearing at the end of uh, of most of the, or every episode. I was under that assumption. But just one more thing I wanted to bring up before we leave. Um, I remember back in the day, back in 2003 or four, d- during the peak of Jackie Chan Adventures, or even towards the end, uh, in Canada, one of the um, convenience stores had a promotion. They had a tin, a tin box. And you would buy the tin box. I think it was like 15 bucks. And every month you would buy a magazine, a Jackie Chan Adventures magazine. And it came with uh, with an amulet or some kind of, uh, uh, yeah, exactly, the amulet. And you would collect them and you would keep them in your little tin box along with cards and maybe a few other little things. And when that came out, I fucking freaked out. Um, the first thing I did, I went to the first store and I found the box. Every other store I went to did not have the box. I looked everywhere. Every single place I could look, I I, I would get the amulets. If I could afford it, I would get them. I think the, the books were like eight, ten bucks, which was a lot of money for 2003 for a kid that's 13 that barely had an allowance. Um, but I do remember investing a lot of money. I thought it was the coolest thing. You know why? Because the amulets you can take and you can put them around your neck, use them, you must use them as some kind of necklace, some kind of martial arts token, um, just really smart idea really well done um but i think it just was you know underappreciated and undervalued it didn't get much support not a lot of people knew about it you go to the store you just see this random jackie chan adventure uh, magazine with 15 pages and you go okay there's an amulet well, i'm not going to spend 10 bucks on that but if you knew that they came it came with like a nice chest like a nice tin box and you can put all the amulets in there and and you know keep it Keep it in your, you know, keep it in your room and open it up and every day put a different one on. I thought that was pretty cool. That was a really good idea. So I did get my hands on that. I uh, haven't been able to find it. I don't know if my parents got rid of it or not. Uh, but I'm going to look on eBay, see, see what's out there on the uh, on that front. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty sure they came out a bunch of toys, action figures, video games. Uh, the whole shebang. The show definitely deserved the attention it got. I know it got a huge following. It was... Uh, it was a very popular show, five seasons. That's no joke. Uh, it is a serious cartoon, in my opinion. It's uh, it deserves it deserves to be up there amongst uh, the ranks of old Saturday morning cartoons. And I think uh, you know one of these days, if ever we do a top twenty, I don't even think you could do a top twenty. You'd have to do a top forty or fifty cartoon, you know, Saturday morning cartoon shows. Jackie Chan Adventures is going to be on my lineup, uh, hands down. It's just. You know, like I said, the story, it's got a great story. It follows through. You've probably got a few fillers here and there, but even the fillers are, what do you expect from, you know, just like Ninja Turtles. Uh, Every once in a while, you need an episode where you're just kicking butt for no reason. And uh, and this show, like I said, reminds me of Ninja Turtles, and I think it does deserve to be up there with them. So, yeah, without further ado, guys, that was Jackie Chan Adventures Season 1, Episode 1, The Dark Hand. Thank you for watching. Uh, Stay safe out there. Hope everybody's doing good with their family. And um, keep the morale up. We'll keep we'll keep posting more cartoons and uh, take care, everybody. All right, peace.
You just listened to a Tune Along podcast. If you like what you heard or have any comments or feedback, don't hesitate to check out more on iTunes, Spotify, and TuneIn Radio, as well as Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube for more info. I'll see you next time. Ciao!